Hi, I'm here reviewing my new Sony Vio F. It's about a week old. Um, off the bat, I'm going to apologize for the shaky cam. I don't have any sort of stand or anything. I'm doing what I can. Uh, what I'm reviewing is the Vio F2390X, which means it's a fall 2011 model configured to order. I got it with the 2.2 GHz quad-core i7, the NVIDIA GeForce 540M, 6 GB of RAM, and a 750GB 7200RPM hard drive. Comes standard with a 16.4 inch um, 1080p matte screen. I also picked the fresh start option which means that you don't get some of the normal bloatware you get. So you don't get Viogate which is a dock, a dock for launching programs. But honestly in Windows 7 I mean you've got, you can pin programs to the taskbar, you can use the start menu, or you can put a shortcut on the desktop so do you really need a fourth way? Um, you also uh, don't get any antivirus free trial software, but, you know, come on, it's 2011. Use either Microsoft Security Essentials or Avast. Um, it's free and they work better anyway. Um, so the plus side of doing that fresh start option is when I got the machine, I didn't have to uh, mess around with uninstalling anything. I could just take it out of the box, do the initial Windows setup, and it was ready to go. Um, and, you know, that's, that's kind of nice for people who don't want to mess around with doing a fresh install of Windows and downloading drivers and such when they get their new machine. All in all, it came to uh, $12.49, which is, I think, a pretty good price for what you get. And you can get it for about $1,000 if you don't do the GPU upgrade, the hard drive upgrade, uh, the RAM upgrade. And you still get the same screen, you still get the same CPU, so that's, that's a pretty good deal. Let's take a look around the physical thing, or uh, the case. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of a satin matte finish. I'm not convinced it's going to be super durable, so you might get some cosmetic scratches, but I'm not worried about it actually getting damaged or anything. But if you're someone who really doesn't like cosmetic scratches, maybe a hard plastic like a ThinkPad or, or an aluminum case like a MacBook Pro might be a better deal. Um, for comparison, I stuck it next to my old MacBook Pro 15 here. As you can see, in terms of length and width, it's actually it's actually pretty similar, but I think the big difference is in thickness. I'm going to turn these around, stick them next to each other, and now you can see that uh, the Vio is about two and a half times as thick as the MacBook Pro. It's actually not that much heavier. We're talking about seven pounds versus five and a half, but if thickness is an issue for you, this is about the worst machine on the market besides a uh, Asus G series but uh you know doesn't bother me any so uh let's see oh the AC adapter I stuck it on top of a DVD case here so you can kind of see it is well it's it's actually a brick it's a bit over an inch thick it's pretty heavy pretty bulky but um you know they I got a messenger bag from Sony to carry the laptop and the adapter, and it's it's not a big deal. But you know, if you want something, if you don't like a big adapter, that's that's something to watch out for. Um, now they actually did kind of style this thing. Let me open it up. You can see the shape better. It's kind of got this uh, angular shape to the top case, and kind of an unusual hinge design. It's kind, of, I think it's pretty good looking. It's kind of a very monolithic design. Um, it's definitely not the mainstream. I mean, everybody nowadays is styling their machines kind of like the MacBook Pro, and this is different. But if if you like that, that's cool. If you don't, there you go. But it's definitely it's definitely unique. It's uh, it's got some unique style to it. So uh, let's see. Now that it's open, you should be seeing that the screen is really uh, very bright. Um, it's kind of blinding everything else. Didn't anticipate that. Um, let me uh, flip the light on, see if we can... There we go. Kind of balance that out a bit so you can actually still see the physical machine and see the screen. Let's see. So there we go. You see the, the colors are quite nice. They're quite vibrant. Um, now, uh, I talk about the screen, I'm going to start up a 1080p trailer for the Three Musketeers movie. I actually think this looks 
terrible, but um, it does show off the screen nicely while it goes. I turned the sound off just because I was going to talk through it, and honestly, the dialogue is pretty painful in this. But I just wanted to kind of show off what I could of the screen. Now you'll see, you sort of get a bit of a reflection. It's it's not a really matte, matte screen like some business class machines when the screen goes black, but it's not the high gloss that you end up with a lot of consumer things. So I can use it under fluorescent lights and I can't see every detail of the lights on, on the ceiling above me. Um, so it, it's a really nice compromise. It's kind of halfway in between matte and glossy. Um, this is my first experience with a proper 1080p screen and I really am pretty happy with that. Um, let me go ahead and pop out of that and I'll show you uh, let's see one of the nice things about going 1080p is you can fit two full um, pages of text on here um, with the taskbar over on the right side that's where I always like to put it I think it makes more sense over there um, it also centers the screen over the typing keys but uh, this is at 100% zoom in uh, Microsoft Word and you can fit two full pages of text and the I don't know if you can see this on the review, but the text is really quite sharp. You can also see that I'm kind of OCD. I actually wrote out a script before I did this so that I didn't lose track of what I wanted to say. But, you know, that is what it is. Um, as for the sound, when I first got to this thing, I was actually really pretty unimpressed by the sound. And I uh, did some looking online, and I figured out what happened is uh, there's this Dolby Home Theater application that's installed and it's not activated from the factory and you absolutely positively need to activate it. It dramatically improves sound quality. And so I have it, there's three settings. You go into the start menu and one of the programs is Dolby and uh, when it comes shipped it's turned off. You turn it on then you can switch between three profiles, movie, music, gaming. I think movie sounds better regardless of what you're doing. So I've just set it on movie and I'm going to leave it to that, but what I'll do is I'll pick something that's got a bit of good sound to it. Um, let's say the Gladiator soundtrack. And I don't know whether you're going to be able to hear it or not on this video, but I'm going to just... You, you hear how you lose all the mid-range and any sort of bass? And, I mean, it's the same notes, but all the depth goes out of the music when this thing isn't enabled. So, I've turned it on, and I'm never going to turn it off. With it on, it doesn't have as prominent bass as some machines. I've heard that the Dell XPS has got a really good bass system, but uh, the quality of the treble and the mid-range, and the quality of the bass, even if not the volume of the bass, is really quite good. So. Uh, that's, I, I think overall it's got a nice sound system. So, uh, let's see. Um, let's talk a little bit about more of the, the physical thing. The typing surface here, you can see it's got a numpad on the right side. It's one of the reasons why I think putting the taskbar on the right side makes so much sense. Not only do you maximize visual space, but it kind of centers the letter keys. But, uh... It's got a really solid typing surface. Um, there's no flex at all to the case when you type on the keyboard. That's really nice. Um, and I actually, I like this keyboard a lot. The keys have good spring action. Occasionally I get a little squeak from the space bar or the backspace key if I don't hit it dead on, but I think that's gonna go away as it breaks in. Overall, it's a relatively quiet keyboard. Um, all the keys feel pretty consistent. They've got good spring action. It really, really is a nice typing surface. So if you type a lot, um, that's a positive. Um, now that solidity that the typing surface has, it's not quite mirrored in the the back of the case and the bottom of the case. There's a little bit of flex. I don't know if you're able to see that it's got a bit of flex, but once again, you know, it's, it's clear you're not, say, like with this, you're carrying a solid piece of metal. You know, if that sort of thing bothers you, that's that. I don't think it's actually impractical or anything. I think it's just a matter of personal taste. And likewise on the bottom, there's a little bit of flex and the, the battery kind of shifts around a little bit. Um, but once again, I don't think that impairs the practicality of it. I think it's just a matter of personal taste. It doesn't bother me any, but if it, if it bothers you, look for something with a 
you know, well, ideally an aluminum unibody case, which I think pretty much nowadays is just a MacBook Pro. But, uh, let's see. Um, oh, the, uh, on the other hand, let me talk about one of the things that this does not do right. Um, the trackpad is, you'll notice I've got over here, a plug-in for a little wireless mouse. There's a reason for this. This trackpad is e about the worst trackpad I've used in a while. It has two-finger scroll. doesn't work to save its life. Um, also, the key is it's it's a rocker key, so if you click near the middle, you're not going to be able to click at all. You've got to click on the outside here or the outside here to left or right click. Um, for just moving it around, it works alright. I mean, it gets the job done, but if you're doing any sort of real work, an external mouse is really preferable. Um, whereas with a MacBook Pro, the trackpad is really as good as you get. You can see there, um, when I first started up, the... Oh, no, I can't get it to turn, turn on again, but... Uh... Well, anyway, keyboard's backlit. It turns on and off on its own. Normally, it's pretty good about turning on when I hit the key. I think it's too bright for it to turn on. That's what's going on. But uh, I can't find any manual settings for the backlit keyboard, so if you're the sort of person who wants to leave it off or leave it on for a long time, even when you're not typing, if there's a way to manually control that, haven't found it yet. But for the most part, I mean, it's acting up for me right now, but for the most part, I, I you know, it seems to do a good job of turning off when it's not being used and turning on when it's being used. Um, oh, one other thing I want to say about the trackpad, it's a little bit too far to the left. Um, I catch it with the heel of my left hand when I'm when I'm typing. Um, so the nice thing is you can you can enable or disable it by just doing function F1. That'll turn off the trackpad if it's causing you problems. Um, I'm a certain person who likes an external mouse, so that's not a big deal to me, but people out there who like nice trackpads, this is probably not the machine for you. Um, let's see. Uh, in terms of day-to-day -day tasks, um, this thing is really fast. Um, like I said, it's got a 2.2 gigahertz uh, Sandy Bridge um, quad-core i7. It's a really fast CPU for any sort of day-to-day -day usage. Um, I'm quite fond of it. Um, in terms of gaming, it's got a 540M, which I think it it gets the job done, but it's uh, it's nothing remarkable in the modern day market. So, for example, I can run a Bad Company 2. Um, I run it uh, 1366 by 768 um, in medium detail settings, and it's it runs buttery smooth. You don't get any um, frame rate drops, even in firefights with a lot of explosions and dust and particle effects and stuff. Um, but it's, you know, it's not something that's going to be running Battlefield 3 at um, 1080p resolution. And so, you know, look at an Alienware or an Asus G or a Sega, if that's your cup of tea. Um, another modern game, um, StarCraft 2, that I can run at 1080p on medium detail. The 1080p is really good for that, just because there's so many little units you're trying to manage all at once. Um, and it runs really smooth at medium detail, even when you've got big battles going. I probably could get it up to high. I haven't tried it yet to see how it works. Um, surprisingly, the menu screen has, you know, it's got that battle cruiser floating in the background while you're in the menu screen. That thing actually has frame rate issues, but the game itself runs really smoothly for me. Um, so, you know, overall, it's this is not a gaming machine. It's a machine that can game. Um, but it does a perfectly good job of that. Day-to-day -day tasks, it's a performance beast, so I have no, no reason to complain. I think you'd have to be doing some sort of industry-specific thing or coding or something like that to ever even think about complaining about the speed of this machine. Um, battery life, um, I've actually been really pleased with it so far. It's, uh, it lasts about three and a half hours or maybe even a little bit longer when I'm just doing day-to-day -day tasks. Um, you know, web browsing with, um, and typing um, with Wi-Fi enabled. Um, even listening to some music while I do that through either Pandora or through um, iTunes. Um, there you can kind of see it's got that cool kind of double lip thing. You can see the blue USB 3.0. You can see the heat vent. Sorry, I got distracted. But what I was saying is three and a half hours for battery life is uh, pretty typical. And that works out pretty well for me. Um... I get a bit over an hour gaming on battery, but you never want to be gaming on battery anyway. 
Um, so three and a half hours is actually more than I expected. I mean, it's got a dedicated GPU and it's not switchable, so I was expecting about two. Um, three and a half is, is really pretty good. Um, that's, that's all I got right now, so if you've got any questions, post a comment to this video and I'm happy to respond. I think it's a really good machine. Um, I'd endorse for anyone who likes to watch movies on it. That screen is really good. I hope you got to see some of the detail on that. It's a really, really impressive screen. Um, if you type a lot, if you do a lot of word processing, it's a really good machine because it's got a lot of working area, really sharp screen. The matte screen is good for overhead lighting. The keyboard is fantastic. Um, really, anyone who's looking for anything like that, or just someone who really appreciates good screen and keyboard, um, fast CPU, and uh, doesn't care that you've got one of the thicker machines on the market, this is a really good machine. So I've been really happy with it so far. If you've got any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer them. Just uh, post a comment to the video. All right, thanks a lot, everybody.